Professor Dave and Chegg here. In talking about thermochemistry, we discussed the concept of enthalpy, and more recently, we have been talking about the concept of entropy. These come together, along with temperature, to determine the spontaneity of a process, which is governed by something called Gibbs free energy. Determining whether a process is spontaneous or not will be tremendously important, so let's go through this concept now. We already know how to distinguish between a spontaneous and non-spontaneous process. A spontaneous process is one that simply happens on its own, completely naturally. Imagine water flowing in a river, downhill. This happens because of gravity, and it is completely spontaneous, occurring with no intervention. A non-spontaneous process is one that will not occur unless it is driven by energy input from an external source. Water flowing uphill is non-spontaneous, meaning it won't happen on its own, but it can with the help of a pump that can produce energy that will drive the water against gravity, so we can make this process happen. We can view phase changes this way too. Under standard conditions, ice will melt, but liquid water will not freeze. One process is spontaneous, the other is non-spontaneous. We should note that spontaneity has nothing to do with how fast or slow a process is. There are spontaneous reactions that happen in a split second, and there are some that happen over many years. We know that spontaneous processes favor the dispersal of matter and energy, whether this means a gas from a flask spontaneously moving to fill up an adjacent empty flask, or heat spontaneously flowing from hot to cold objects, like a hot coffee cup in your hand. But when looking at a chemical reaction, we also have to involve enthalpy. We know that an exothermic reaction is more likely to be spontaneous, while an endothermic reaction is more likely to be non-spontaneous. But we want to be able to confidently predict whether any process is spontaneous or not, so we need to combine enthalpy and entropy to get another thermodynamic quantity, Gibbs free energy, symbolized with a capital G. This is the parameter that will unequivocally predict whether a reaction is spontaneous, and it depends on enthalpy, entropy, and temperature, according to this equation. Of course, more useful than assigning absolute values, we typically measure changes in these values, so we can say that the change in the Gibbs free energy over a particular process is equal to the change in enthalpy minus the temperature times the change in entropy. This equation is invaluable in chemistry. Unlike the vague guidelines for predicting spontaneity that we examined earlier, delta G tells us information about the entropy change for the universe rather than just for the system, which is a more definitive way of determining spontaneity. It is the case that if the delta G for a reaction is negative, the reaction will be spontaneous. If the delta G is positive, the reaction will be non-spontaneous. And if delta G equals zero, the system is at equilibrium and any accompanying process will be reversible. To see this demonstrated, let's look at the process of ice melting with the associated delta H and delta S given here, and let's see whether this would be spontaneous at three different temperatures, negative 10 degrees Celsius, zero, and positive 10. We can convert these temperatures into Kelvin, and then plug everything into the Gibbs free energy equation. Perhaps not shockingly, we will find that ice melting is spontaneous above zero and non-spontaneous below zero. We still have more to discuss regarding Gibbs free energy and spontaneity, so let's go ahead and see if we can get more quantitative with these calculations. Professor Dave for Chegg, see you next time.